Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I couldn't be at school today. I just came down with a bad cold. I'm going to try and rest today and get over it so I can be there tomorrow. Um, I'm going to review percent composition really quickly and then move on to empirical formulas. Um, watch the other videos if you can, um, but this is a quick overview of um, yesterday and today. So the percent composition for aluminum oxide, what you just need to do, and let me get the color here, is take aluminum. We have two of them at 27 grams per mole each for a total of 54 grams per mole. And oxygen, three at 16 each. And that is 48 grams per mole for a total of about 102 grams per mole. And so all you have to do now is percent aluminum is equal to 54 divided by 102 times 100, which will work out to slightly over 50% or under 50%. So 52.9% wow. aluminum, and you could do the math or you could just do the subtraction, and that's my dog protecting the house from all kinds of dangers. So 48 divided by 102 is 47.05% oxygen. You could have done that by subtraction. But that is the quick way to do percent composition. Now, moving on to empirical formula. And this is an example from your book. Um, what they say is you assume you have a 100 gram sample. This is when things are met, figured out in percent composition. For example, the percent composition of diborane is 78% boron and 21% hydrogen. If we assume a 100 gram sample, that would give us 78.1 78 grams of boron and 21 grams of hydrogen. We're going to convert, which is this is the mass composition. of each element two moles. So it's going to be 78.1 grams divided by one mole or times the inverse of the molar mass, which the molar mass of boron is 10.81. You come up with 7.22 moles. Do the same for the hydrogen. You come up with 21 moles of hydrogen. So this is a ratio of 7.22 to 21.7 of hydrogen, but this is not the smallest whole number ratio. So what we do then is essentially this, and I'm going to write it down so it's a little clearer. You're going to take 7.22 and divide it by the smallest number of either one. And this is 21.7. We're going to divide it by the same 7.22 because you want to get a 1 for at least one of the um, elements. And so the ratio now of boron to hydrogen is 1 to 3.01. And you can round this off. So the ratio is... 1 to 3, which means for every boron, you have three hydrogens. And that's the empirical formula. Um, tomorrow we'll talk about molecular formula, which gets it into the final form. But for today, all you're going to be doing is figuring out um, empirical formulas. 
And in the next example, I'm going to take one from your book. It's already in Graham, so you don't have to worry about doing anything else. So we're going to take 72. This is actually number 5 on your homework. We're going to take 72 grams of carbon and 16 grams of hydrogen. We're going to divide by the molar mass, which is 12 for carbon. And you could do 12.01 if you wanted to. And for hydrogen, it's divided by 1 or 1.01. So this is easy. You're going to get 16 moles. But 72 divided by 12 is 6 moles. So right now the ratio is 6 to 16. And here's the difference here. I can't, if I do, if I go 6 over 6 and 16 over 6, um, I get 1 to 2.67. That's not a whole number ratio. But it's pretty close. And so you could round this off to one to two and a half and if you doubled that then it would be two to five and so the ratio would be c to h five and so that's where you go there and the other one is and i'm going to hit pause here a second the other is determining a um, empirical formula from a molecular formula. And let's take um, ethane, which is C2H6. And what we're going to do here is essentially this. We got 2 and 6 as our ratios here. But I can simplify that. I can divide both by 2 and so just from the molecular formula I can work backwards to get the empirical formula so 2 divided by 2 is just 1 carbon and 6 divided by 2 is 3 hydrogens another one would be butane which would be C4 H10 and again we can divide these four and ten four won't go into ten but two goes into both <clears throat> and so it's going to be c two h five for the empirical formula so work on the rest of the homework today in class and i'll post this right now